The Archdiocese of Chicago is a vibrant and diverse faith community. We celebrate our faith through worship, evangelization, and reaching out to the needy. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines. My name is Joyce Juriga. I'm the editor of the Chicago Catholic, and this is where we go beyond the headlines to talk to the people who are making the news that we're covering in the newspaper. And today we have as our guest, Father Ramil Fajardo. He wears many hats here in the Archdiocese of Chicago, but we're talking about the National Shrine to Mother Cabrini, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, um, here in Chicago. It's in Lincoln Park. It's I think it's a gem. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people don't know about, so we wanted to talk about that. So, welcome. Thank you very much. And let's talk about, some people might not know who Mother Cabrini is. Absolutely, um, yeah. Mother Cabrini is one of our forgotten saints. She was the first American citizen saint, and she was canonized in 1946 by Pope Pius XII, and it was her vision to come to the United States. Uh, one of the great stories about Mother Cabrini was that as a religious in Italy, she was feeling the need to do more. I have to do more. There's just, I, I'm, I'm teaching, I'm doing all these things with the, with the local girls, but she and her sisters were feeling the need to really do more. There's, what is our Lord asking of us? And she had been consulting with, the, uh, with others and they all decided, let's go, to, let's go to China. The needs are the greatest. Now, a couple of things most people don't realize is up until her time, women religious were in cloisters. They ran schools. They, they, were, they were located in one place. She was proposing a group of missionary sisters to step out of the cloister, step out of a ministry, a specified apostolate, and be among the people. That just simply didn't happen really up until that point. So Pope Leo XIII said, well, if you're going to do that, then not to the east but to the west. I'd like you to go to New York. Your fellow Italian countrymen and women are suffering immensely in the New World. And so, uh, after much cajoling and, and, and prompting, Mother Cabrini came to New York to begin her work. And she right away ran into opposition. So, one of the first stories was she was inspired. Do more. What more can I do for the Lord? Secondly, nothing is going to get in the way of doing the Lord's work, right? So, we always talk about Cabrini and spirituality. Well, technically, it's the gospel. Mm. It's simply the gospel. She knew how to love, so therefore she knew how to serve. She loved our Lord, so therefore she had to serve her brothers and sisters. Not quite what she wanted, but Pope Leo XIII said, think about your Italian countrymen and women in a new world. Let's start there. And she did. How'd she end up in Chicago? Eventually, she started establishing locations all throughout the United States. Now, th here's another interesting story. Because of an incident when she was a young, uh, a young girl, she almost drowned. So she was absolutely afraid of water. Mm. Had a real, real fear of water. So imagine her getting on an ocean liner, a boat, in third, uh, I guess third class or steerage with all the other immigrants crossing the Atlantic to get to the United States. And once she was here, she began in New York and then she started moving around different parts of the country. The needs were enormous, absolutely enormous. So after the United States, then she started traveling throughout Central and South America, Argentina, Central America, and then back and forth to Italy. I mean, and this was a woman who was absolutely petrified of water, but she would not let her fear motivate what her mission was from the Lord. You know, I forgot about that because we've done a ton of stories. There was the 175th anniversary of her canonization, and then the shrine had... Um, you know, there was the Jubilee year, and so, so we've done a ton of stuff, and we went back and looked at our coverage and stuff, and I forgot that she was afraid of water, but yet she made all those crossings. Absolutely. And th there's another lesson for all of us today that our purpose is to do God's will, so we should not let our fears dictate how we do the Lord's mission. He will always provide. You know, there's simply no way we would ever fail, provided we're doing everything for the Lord, right? Her love of this most sacred heart compelled. There's really hardly any way to say she was compelled to do the Lord's work. I mean, it's, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, compulsion is, is kind of takes a strong word in our society, 
but she felt compelled out of love. Lord, what more do you want me to do for you? And she says, as long as I've got strength, I'm going to do it. I will do it. And she inspired her sisters to also spread your wings. We've got a lot of work to do. There are people in need. Can you talk about what she did here in Chicago? Some, I mean, people talk, probably hear Cabrini and mm-hmm. they think of Cabrini Green. And mm-hmm. they don't know that it was named after Mother Cabrini. But that... It really isn't what she did here. She did a lot. Correct. That, that housing um, situation was done without the knowledge, really, of the sisters. It was, a, it was uh-huh. just an understanding of the neighborhood. So St. Francis Xavier Cabrini came to Chicago, and the principal apostolate, and maybe I could be corrected on this by the sisters themselves, but the most famous one would be Columbus Hospital, where the current shrine is located. Mother Cabrini founded that hospital and she died there in 1917, December 1917, as she was preparing uh, Christmas candies for the kids. And she passed away uh, in in her chair in Chicago. So that's why her beatification, canonization, recognition as the first American citizen saint is an important, important thing for us Chicagoans. She's one of ours. Yeah. I mean, they said she read, rode the bus or rode the mm-hmm. L at the time. And, mm-hmm. yeah, people had, when we were going through our um, our archives and stuff, people just had stories of just running into Mother Cabrini. Right, right. You know, and one that I remember was um, a woman's son uh, was hit, struck by the L. And apparently it was it was horrific. And she was in, and the doctors wouldn't let her see her son. Mm-hmm. And he was dying. Right. And she was crying. Did you hear this story? I did not. Yeah, and she was crying. The mom was crying in the hallway, and Mother Cabrini asked, passed her and asked her what was what was going on. And she told her, and Mother Cabrini grabs, you know, escorts the mom and to the son so she could see him before he died. Like, right. you know, and, um, it's just uh, she's such a part of Chicago history. And then there was a couple churches and and that aren't there anymore. Mm-hmm. Was Assumption hers? Assumption had a school. Okay. And that's where uh, her presence is very much felt. It's interesting because Chicago's old immigrant past, really the the gentrification kind of eliminated some of our immigrant past. It's a very upscale city now, very cosmopolitan, very modern. So some of her locations, the things that she would have recognized have been obliterated, just that's time. Plus also new apostolates, new projects. Uh, But Assumption Church was a big one. In fact, there are you might have seen it at the shrine. There was a picture of a school where all these kids were just sitting on whatever space was open, and there they were. That's, that's Assumption School. And to this day, there's a huge statue of Mother Cabrini in the church. <laughs> Every time I discover her presence uh, by way of commemoration or whatever, there was a huge devotion to her in the United States and especially in Chicago. She was so important as a tangible, tangible advocate for not only just prayer, but gospel values, the, the values of Jesus Christ, especially education, especially education yeah. and healthcare. Two things, if you dignify the human person, then it begins with their health as well as their education. That's what makes them important members of our society. And she was big on immigrants welcome, being welcomed and also embracing their society. It's like, you have chosen to come here, embrace it. Hold on one second. Brian, I can't hear anymore. They'll edit this out. Okay. So for those of you who are watching or who are listening and don't know, Assumption is in River, about River North area. And then the Columbus Hospital, they tore it down, put a um, huge luxury condo building. But it's in Lincoln Park right across from the Lincoln Park Zoo. And that's where the shrine is. So... Um, Kind of give you some perspective on on Mother Cabrini, and so talk. Let's talk about the shrine and um, what it is and why it was built. The shrine was itself built after her canonization, and it was it was in the middle of Columbus Hospital, and it was consecrated by Samuel Cardinal Stritch in 1955. And I, I have a little story myself. When I was in grade school, that was must have been maybe 1973-74. So I'll just I'll say it. I'm 59 years old. <laughs> in case anyone were curious, that long ago, uh, when I was a little kid, with our grade school class, we had took a field trip and went down to the shrine, and that was my first exposure to Mother Cabrini. Mm. You know, it must have been about third or fourth grade, and you know how kids are. 
the, uh, the, the, the sister who was giving us a tour showed us, and there is Mother Cabrini's arm. And all the kids ran down and were like, ooh, a body part. <laughs> we're touching the glass. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's a wonderful entree into Catholic sacramentals and yeah. the story of the saints. So right away, it intrigued me. And who would have thought 30 years later I'd have some connection with it when I was assigned to uh, St. Clement in 2003, 2004 as a deacon and then as an associate pastor, that's when the hospital had closed down already. Mm. And so we had the shrine consecrated in 1955. Car uh, Samuel Cardinal Stritch called it a national shrine. It was his way of saying our intent is to have a national shrine. And that's a title granted only by the Bishop's Conference. Mm. Right? It has to be approved by the Bishop's Conference. So we are a national shrine granted by the bishops themselves. And it's the only one? Of Mother Cabrini's. Yeah. Even in, like, like you were, we were talking off, um, off air before we started, there's, there's also something in New York and Colorado. Correct. There is the shrine, uh, the shrine of Mother Cabrini in Upper Manhattan on the west side. That is a very active parish as well. They have very deliberate uh, ministry to the, to the homeless, to those who are in need, and immigration concerns. There is a retreat house in Golden, Colorado, which up in the mountains, it helps people recollect themselves and to be inspired by Mother Cabrini's work and mission. And for us in Chicago, we have the National Shrine, the place where she died, where we honor our first American citizen saint. And it's, it's, it's great. There's, there's, as I like to say, there's no competition. We all three different Cabrini locations hit something different about Mother Cabrini and her desire to serve. And that's a really wonderful imagery of St. Paul. You know, there are many parts, but only one body. Mm. So how do we serve our people, right? And we inspire them through Mother Cabrini. And it's got the neatest little um, museum. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's the mock-up of the room in the former hospital where she passed away, entered, uh, entered everlasting life in 1917 and it's just very very cool because when you see the bed that she slept in her chair where she sat in the, the actual chair where she died and the way she died was she expectorated blood she was suffering very greatly from uh, tuberculosis or some element of tuberculosis and she coughed herself to death unfortunately so there's a stain of blood and it's, you can still see it the first class relic right there I always think that's neat because this is you know, I'm I'm a big fan of saints, and um, you know I'm really involved with the Father Tolton stuff. And right. these are people who walked our streets. Like right. Mother Cabrini walked near the Lincoln Parks. I don't know when that opened and what. But anyway, regardless, she walked our streets. Right. She rode our buses. She took the L. She, you know, this is like something tangible. You know, a piece of heaven that we can relate to. Right. And and. Um, I always think that's super powerful. People always talk about keeping it real. And that's precisely what Mother Cabrini was. She was real. Yeah. So if anyone got in her way, and, she, and since she was absolutely convinced she was doing God's work, people had to be convinced, join me. If not, then don't get in my way. <laughs> and it, it's, it, it was just very inspiring to hear about the fact that, yeah, you know, they would, who's this little woman? You know, they, they would try to take advantage of her. And she would be, no, 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 you don't. <laughs> First of all, don't do that to God. Number two, I'm smart enough to know what you're doing. So she kept it real. And I, I like that because what is keeping it real? You know, we're, we're part of this world, but we're also not to, be, not to be taken advantage of. And especially if you're convinced, like she was, this is God's work. And of course, you'll do what you have to do. Amen. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Father Emil and talking about Mother Cabrini. Don't go away.
Catholic Charities Loss Program was created more than 40 years ago to help survivors of suicide wherever they are in the grieving process. This nationally recognized program continues to offer a safe, non-judgmental environment where survivors of suicide can find community, direction, and resources for healing after suffering the devastating loss of a loved one. Online and in-person services are available for individuals, couples, children, and families of all faith traditions. To learn more, call 312-655-7283 or email loss at catholiccharities.net. Don't suffer alone. We are here to offer loving outreach to survivors of suicide. Contact Catholic Charities today. Year 44 for me teaching. When I started here, there were teachers here that had taught me when I was a student. Now I'm the old person. <laughs> right now, I teach junior high math. I love when kids find what I'm teaching to be fun and they get it. I see that light bulb go off and it's a thrill. People are always amazed. What? what? You're here for 44 years? It's hard for me to believe, frankly. <laughs> I love what I do. Every summer I think, oh, I miss the classroom. Even on the weekends, I think I can't wait to get back on Monday and teach those quadratic equations. <laughs> Shape the next generation of leaders. Teach. Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Welcome back to Beyond the Headlines. Today we're talking about the shrine, the National Shrine of um, Mother Cabrini in Lincoln Park. Before we go back to Father Emil, I wanted to plug the newspaper. You can follow us online at chicagocatholic.com. There's uh, tabs there for social media. You can sign up for our free newsletter that I send out about three times a week. And in the latest issue, we've got Cardinal Supich is talking about what the church is doing in Chicago for the migrants who are arriving regularly. We also have a neat story. Um, the Latin patriarch from Jerusalem recently visited. We have a new Arab Catholic community at Our Lady of the Ridge in, in St. Linus in, in Chicago Ridge. So he came to visit and he said some very frank things about the war going on between Israel and Hamas. And we also have a story about some seminarians who visited us as part of a Catholic Campaign for Human Development Poverty Immersion Program. and they. We're working up at St. Mary the Lake um, on the north side, helping, uh, trying to help settle some migrant families that are living there. So let's go back to Father Ramil Fajardo. We're talking about the shrine, National Shrine of Mother Cabrini. It's not the former name in Lincoln Park, but Father, talk about the shrine, how people can visit, and then we're gonna talk about a new movie coming out. Absolutely. Come and visit us at 2520 North Lakeview Avenue. And our telephone number is 773 three six zero five one one five uh, and you can always find us online just Google or, or type out National Shrine Cabrini Chicago so it's a it's a wonderful place it's so unusual because uh, as we were talking before the break the chapel itself is in the old courtyard of the hospital and it is a hidden gem because right now it's surrounded again partially by private residences con uh, condominium building so it's, it's really truly hidden. It's very hidden in that sense, but it's still a wonderful place to come and pray. Uh, doors are open and we want people to come in and in a busy day, come, spend a few minutes. All are welcome, just come and enjoy the silence and, and the beauty of the shrine itself. There's so much beautiful artwork. Yeah, there's and mosaics and stuff, or is it paintings on the ceiling? Frescoes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there are some mosaics and sidebar thought, one time I, we had a tour of kids, and young, uh, young kids and teenagers, and I just said, I'd like to challenge you, count the angels. Mm. And they looked up and they were trying to count one by one, I said, forget it, because I showed them even little details around the altar, little cherub heads. I said, you're never gonna count it all because when I sit there saying mass, I'll look around, how many angels are there? <laughs> 
trying to pay attention at Mass and Air, I'm trying to count all the angels and they're all hidden. There's so many details. Your mind trips over the details and that's what sacred art is supposed to do. It's supposed to entrance you with the, the music, the sacred liturgy, the scripture readings, the community together. Lots of details that your mind can chew on while you're, while you're hearing and attending Mass. Or even I, just prayer. I agree. So there's Mass on the weekends, right? Mass on Saturday, 4 o'clock. First and third Saturdays, we'll have confession at 3 o'clock. And then Sundays, we'll have Mass at 10 a.m. And then we just we run this stuff in the newsletter, um, I mean in the newspaper. So there's a Mass for Peace now and uh, regularly, and then there's also Adoration once a week, right? Correct. So on every Thursday at 6 p.m., we will have a Mass for Peace. We remember in a very special way our, uh, our first responders, especially our police officers, our firefighters, all those who serve in very dangerous and, and I, I presume underappreciated uh, vocations because when we need help, they're there, mm -hmm. right? So we want to honor them. Every Thursday we have a mass and also we pray for victims of violence, right? Uh, and we also have First Fridays, First Saturday devotions, Okay. Right. So, so for example, this coming Saturday will be first uh, first Saturday. I'll be doing a meditation. We will have prayer, rosary, and then mass, and then we will have a, a hospitality afterwards, just to kind of get to know each other. Is that in the morning or the afternoon? It's in the morning. Morning. Okay. In the morning. That's cool. We should put that in the paper too. All right. Talk about the movie that's coming up, and you had something to do with it. Yeah. Well, uh, on March eighth, International Women's Day, uh, Angel Studios will be releasing Cabrini. And it is an initiative by Mr. Eustace Wolfington and his group to have Mother Cabrini better known. Now, part of it was a really interesting conversation with Eustace about what are the things they're trying to accomplish. Well, they want to accomplish a story of someone inspired, all right? And they didn't, they didn't per se want to have something specifically religious. In fact, if anything, they were tr scrupulous because they want the experience to be an entree into motivation, hmm. all right? And also, as a woman, she had so many issues that she had to work against, and coming out on International Women's Day, they wanted to be challenging to people of all faiths, or none at all. They want people to be inspired, to question, who is this person, all right? So, throughout the movie, you're gonna see references to the Sacred Heart, the Blessed Virgin, the, uh, the church itself, and it is an opportunity to see what can be done when one is inspired by God's love, right? So it is really a movie about a woman inspired by love of the Sacred Heart. And it's going to release nationally, right? It's going to release nationally on March 8th. And then as it gets better known, we want to see it more locally. We'd like to see it used in ways, for example, of uh, informing our Catholic people. It's amazing how for someone who is a Chicagoan, all of a sudden being forgotten, mm -hmm. you know, a few decades after her canonization, when her when her uh, her devotion and veneration was so powerful in Chicago, New York, all throughout the United States, first American citizen saint, absolutely. So Eustace was uh, very inspired to tell the story of someone who could do something, and that something was motivated because of our Lord. It's the the, the story of Cabrini. How do you think that she relates to us today? She relates to us today because she, she was, first and foremost, someone who wanted to, wanted to do something. I think our issues today revolve around the fact that we want to be known. As human beings, we want to be known. We want to do something. We want to make a difference. And for all of us, following God's love for us inspires us to do something. Right. If we think about it, uh -huh. I, I challenge people that come to me for confession, and I reference it a lot in our homilies. We woke up this morning. We woke up this morning with brainwave activity. We have breath. We have heartbeat. None of that was of our doing. We came alive because God said, wake up, my beloved. Wake up. I got something for you today. Let's discover what we can do. And because he respects our freedom, God said, go, wake up. Let's do something today. And that's the way the saints were and are. There are plenty of saints, I'm sure of it, walking amongst us today. Right. You know, there are plenty of saints because they're inspired to do something 
And I think Mother Teresa of Calcutta, St. Teresa of Calcutta used to say something beautiful for God, right? So uh, even a smile, it is amazing how just acknowledging a person with a smile or holding the door for them, it could change the direction, the trajectory of their life in that moment, right? right? So the little things can make a big difference. And if we're inspired to do something as big as, say, found hospitals or, or to advocate to, to, the, to the society, whatever, like Mother Cabrini did, the point is something, something beautiful for God. It's very inspiring. Um, yeah, I just, I just keep thinking she's just walked among us and this is someone we can relate to and someone that, um, even like she did a lot for the Italian immigrants, but then other immigrants when she came to the United States. And then you know, right now we have a lot of migrants coming in here and, and there's still immigration. There's probably gonna always be immigration issues. And so there's, always, yeah. you know, be inspired by the work that she, she did and yeah, on that whole ministry. And, and just for me, following up what you just said, how can, we, how can she be an example? Right. Ordinary life. Wherever we are, we should be living our life inspired by Christ, right? And it's not a decision we make, it's something that we em embrace. We are God's children. So therefore, for those of us who believe, this should be very ordinary, everyday stuff. And we're inspired, we're suffused with the love of God. We know that, so therefore, Everything and anything we do is about God, right? So ordinary life, you'll find God in the ordinary details of life. So we have about like a little bit less than two minutes. How has being there at the shrine, because that was something that you were kind of assigned to, how has she changed your perspective or impacted you? Again, ordinary life and also reminding me not to take things so seriously. She had oppositions and much worse. Mm. And for some of us, many of us, it's more subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, discouragements and uh, little oppositions of everyday life, which can defeat us, but we're not defeated in the Lord, right? That's her lesson is that we're never defeated. If we understand, keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so I just wanna plug the newspaper one more time um, before we let Father Ramil go. If you go to chicagocatholic.com, you can follow us there. You can subscribe for $30 a year. Cardinal Supich regularly writes. You'll see what's going on with the Pope in Rome and around the world and see what all your fellow Catholics are doing in everyday life. And please go visit the shrine of Mother Cabrini in Lincoln Park. You won't regret it. Really cool museum and it's a beautiful, beautiful space. Father Ramil, thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Joyce. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everybody.